Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about nine reasons Hasbro hates Magic Pros. Uh, this is Hasbro's argument of why Platinum needs to go away. They haven't made this argument, but they have done things in the past to indicate this is how they actually feel. Uh, first of all, the pay cut announcement just was out of the blue, completely unfair. Uh, you might, even if they saw no value in Magic Pro Pro, the Pro Tour, which they do because the Greg Leeds, which is actually a pro-friendly Magic player, he wanted to get rid of the Pro Tour. So imagine Chris Cox coming in and the new dude with no loyalty, no ties to current staff, he'll bring in his own team. It's just like any uh, GM for a football team. If we fire Chris Kelly, uh, no, Chip Kelly. Oh. If we fire Chip Kelly, Guess what? His whole staff is going to go with him to San Francisco to his next team. But we're not, even if they wanted to stay, we'd be like, no, you got to go. You got to go. Not only does his staff go, we, in the Philadelphia Eagles, they burn, you know, Brian Maxwell, they get rid of him, they get rid of Kiko Alonso, they get rid of pretty much everyone. They, like, undo because it's a bad taste in your mouth. Uh, and they might say, oh, he, uh, Greg Leeds, uh, quit amicably. That's just not how it works because Greg Leeds is probably being paid a lot of money and he's not going to go silently into the night. So, yeah, number one, the pay cut announcement for Platinum, completely unreasonable, completely unacceptable to make a promise and then not, and then go back on it and say, hey, well, no more. No more money for you guys next year. When people have made decisions, life decisions, based on the fact that they expected that money to come in. And that's why I personally felt that was very offensive. Uh, next, not paying a living wage. Magic Pros do not make a living wage and they are highly disrespected by Wizards of Coast. I'll get into that later. And they just don't even have a living wage. I mean, that's as simple as that. They're not paid minimal wage to play Magic. They're not paid minimal wage even when they are on camera representing Magic. You don't get money to be on camera, right? Like you should, but you don't. Next, uh, the documentary, uh, the top two Magic players live with their parents at home. And that's not the look that they want to go with. Um, I can tell you there's been discussions, I'm not gonna tell you where, that if you wanted to inspire, using uh, Doublelift as an example from TSM, formerly uh, Counter Logic Games, he left his home and then he made a living. He's making a six-figure, seven-figure income from League of Legends now. He left his home, he got kicked out of his home, lived on the streets, met a random dude called Travis on Reddit, and then that's how he began. That's how his legend began. Now he's quite wealthy. Um, still doesn't know how to, I think he does have a car now, but at the time he didn't know how to drive, Travis was teasing. I mean, I followed the story. It was such an epic story of a guy being kicked out by his mom and you know, loving the game so much, and then he makes it, and then he makes seven figures. Easily his brand is worth seven figures. And that's it, you know, that is uh, it. Um, but Magic, you know, it's such a, it, they pay so poorly. If you're a Magic professional, you should not have to live at home with your parents, unless you want to. You should be able to afford a nice place to live, especially if you are one of the, the top two players, you know, uh, you know, it doesn't make sense, right? Um, the Magic players demonstrate a willingness to work very hard for a little amount of money. It, I don't know why this is, so Wizard Coast views this as bad, although they abuse Magic players and judges to a much greater extent as they are volunteers, right? But it just taints kind of how the game is viewed. Because if I'm going to play, I'm, I'm going to do all this stuff for you, which is a coast, and you're going to not give me a living wage even, and I'm the top of my class, and what happens to everyone else who's not the top of the class? That's pretty ridiculous. Um, it, Wizards of Coast grows, Magic grows via branding to the casual crowd. They understand the numbers. 27, there's 12 to 15 million Magic players. At most, 27 thousand of them at peak time watch a pro tour. 27,000 out of 12, let's say, let's take the small number, 12 million. 
The fact that magic is growing is probably not related to ProTor, at least in the minds, and I think this is a mistake, at least in the minds of Hasbro executives and the new ones, incoming, is probably looking at this program and saying, nah, we need to cut it. And that gets me to the former CEO, President Greg Leeds. Uh, Greg Leeds attempted to, on multiple occasions, get rid of the ProTor. Uh, the only reason it, we still have it is R&D kept it. Um, the only reason we have the Hall of Fame is the, the, R the people who have been ingrained in magic for many, many decades, or not many decades, many years, if not decades, they're so, they fought tooth and nail to keep the Pro Tour. Now, the new CEO, which is another reason, is going to fight tooth and nail to get rid of it. I would be shocked if there was an announcement that 2018, the Platinum Pro, still existed. And I would be shocked if in 2019, a Pro Tour, just like what's currently happening, still existed. We had the best Pro Tour we've ever had. 27,000 people. That was the best Pro Tour and viewership we've ever had. And the next is the Pro Magic Pros don't have any cross promotional appeal. Um, they just don't. I don't know why that is the case. You need to hire a camera crew, just like the Magic Documentary. That's a very good step, but you need like more of those. You need more people making documentaries. When I watch like a TSM on League of Legends, they have like videos every week, like very professionally shot videos with professional editing. With and you're like, oh, Yellow Star is going away, but it looks like he might stay, but he may go away, and it's like this tension, right? Like Yellow Star is giving this interview. And he's like, oh, well, you know, I miss Europe. And you know, he doesn't really miss Europe, but it's personality. We don't know the personalities of these magic probes. We've heard stuff about them, but they don't, there's no YouTube videos documenting Reed Duke's story. There's no YouTube channel dedicated to Team Ultra Pro and like how they train and how they, there's none of this stuff out there, right? And so who are these pros? Many times, out of the Platinum Pros, how many of them can you name? There's about 30 of them. Leave a comment if you can name as many of them as you want, can, because I don't think you can. Um, next, the most disrespectful thing, in my personal opinion, Magic Pro Tour is grueling. It's a officially sponsored event. They don't even cater lunch. Like this, when I found this out, when I was doing my research, I was like, what? Like, what? Even, like, we can't, my business, so I'm a marketing company, we can't launch for every single event. And because it launches such a not expensive event. And the fact they don't cater lunch or even have dinner for, for a whole day of grueling magic playing from beginning to end, they can't, you're telling me a company that makes $300 million cannot cater lunch for the Pro Tour for a small group of people. That, in my opinion, is the ultimate disrespect. Um, because, I mean, how much money does that cost? And how much goodwill would that make when your pros are playing and they're on, you know, you're forcing them to be on camera and they're playing and they're not hungry. Yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Anyway, bye guys.